Ironwood Games. This is Andrew. Uh, welcome to today's Midweek Magic Momir. Um, we'll jump in here um, and start doing this. Momir Vig, um, for those of you that are not familiar, um, I'm going to just start going in and we'll say it's an interesting format. It's I, They bring it around every once in a while, and I really enjoy it. Um, there's like a lot of randomness to it, but in that I think it makes for some really interesting gameplay so you get i'm hoping i'm doing the best but you get a um a deck full of basic lands um oh maybe they've changed them to snow covered basics um since i played them and you get an emblem that you can pay x discard a card um all right let me i'm just gonna start here um do we want to i'm not gonna do it right now but anyways you can pay x so any amount of mana and you discard a card, which all you're going to have is basic lands. Um, and then you randomly create a creature uh, with that has that mana value. You um, can only do it once a turn, only you know uh, when you can cast creatures normally. So it's pretty random. Um, so you activate it. You pay two. Um, you discard a card. And you get a two drop. So there's a little bit of like, there's very much a lot of randomness. Um, I got a leeching sliver, which like, if I could get other slivers, great. Um, a two mana one one uh, with a drain on attack it is fine. Um, but so there's a lot of randomness of what you can get. I know there's some strategies in like what numbers have good things and. But they're always, right, as new sets come out and other things, right, there's always more to it. And it's whatever's available, right, on Arena is what they can do. Um, so I try not to, I think, like, at some point, I don't know if it's still true, in like, 10 or 11 or 12, some mana value, there was only one creature um, that you could... So there was like a, I know what it was. It's you know a tin tin trample. I can't, I'm sure I could figure it out or think about it if I wanted to, um, but I don't. So my opponent, so because discarding and doing this right, there's like again strategy and playing quicker things, saving up your cards to have other things because you discard too many things, you run out of um, the ability to do things. Um, also, see, so since I have three mountains, I'm discarding the mountain because it is. Sometimes you get activated abilities. Having all your colors can be important. Uh, let's see, Dauntless Rescue. Whatever you scry, uh, choose one. So interesting, but again, you know, like no synergies here on with what we've got here. Our opponent didn't. You, you almost always want to play lands out. You want to be able to play a bigger uh, thing. I think, like I said, like a ten. Um, you kind of stop playing lands. Once you run out, you have to decide between do I use the card, the whatever land I drew, as a random creature? Oh. Um, so, haste is good. It's trigger is... It's funny, I'm, I'm chuckling, because it's trigger is you're going to look for dragon cards. You're never going to find a dragon cards, and it doesn't really matter. So it's a uh, completely pointless trigger. I'm happy to not block and get in for five. I don't want to trade these. This doesn't scare me. The haste is good, um, but outside of that, it doesn't uh, do anything that I can read about. Um, so my general strategy is sometimes I'll play a one, and like depending on that, decide other things. Usually I'll just start at two and then just start playing out um, and trying to have a bigger board and seeing what you yeah, let's discard a swamp. Um, so there's, you're never going to be able to give it indestructible. The lifelink is good. Um, knowing like, your opponent never has combat tricks, like everything's on board. So it's a very interesting format. Um, I really enjoy it. If you can get over like maybe the randomness of it, um, I think it's a decent way to kind of maybe experience magic with some of the like combat tricks and other things um, 
removed so you're not as like caught off by those things uh so it's interesting seeing that we didn't trade last time and this lifelink i think has my opponent scared they did not attack um off of that and i'm not willing to trade any of these with their things so, um this is where we're just gonna pay for another creature tap target artifact or creature in this middle i don't think it counts as anything spent but i have no idea to be honest um we'll tap down call again just because it does the most damage um i'm gonna attack with the sliver because i don't mind trading for the two one it deals the damage either way. Most likely, we just get in two damage. They're not going to turn it because the two one um, can threaten to take out either of these. Um, and now this is where, see, my opponent, by holding back, has a few more cards in hand. Uh, they are on the draw, so they get to draw an extra card. They've just played their fifth. They'll discard, so there'll be two cards ahead of us. Uh, by not having a two drop. Ooh, flying is so good in this format. Um, yeah, this is where it gets very interesting. So playing a six drop could be interesting. We're going to attack with the four four and see what we get. Uh, my opponent would be foolish to block with the four three. Uh, but double blocking. Okay, they will block with the 4-3. See, I think the double block, but I could see their thoughts. So, um, again, we're going to hold up cards, try and get like a 7 and an 8, something maybe a little bit better. Sometimes you get, you know, an 8-mana vanilla creature with nothing. A lot of times the higher mana values have more ETBs and other effects, um, and you get them. So we'll see. 6... Track. They get indestructible until end of turn. That's really good. Because um, now our opponent can just attack whatever they want. Alright, so we held off for a turn on six. Because I felt like getting that trade, our 4 4 for their 4 3. Did I not do it right? Cancel. Um, we want to do seven. Five, six, seven. There we go. Discard planes. Uh, more likely, like a fire breathing effect is often more likely. When you're a flying attacks, you may draw a card. This is fun because I don't have to control that creature. So if they attack with their 5-5, uh, five five, I get to draw a card. Um, which in this format is very good. Uh, the 3-7 blocks the 5-5. Five five. Like This is also just a good creature. Like I said, seven I think is generally some of the better like value creatures. Um, but there's a lot of of range and variance in that. So what do we get? Lands you control, put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. That's ridiculous. That is. So Oh, ridiculous. They can just put lands and draw. That's such a good perfect card. Oh my goodness. Because you just do it until you have a 2020. Um, oh, 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 that is such a good 7 drop. So, there's certain cards that definitely are broken in this format. Um, so... I think if I'm my opponent, I don't know if I make it a uh, 25 or, or what. Um, I'm not going to concede. Um, so I think like a 2020 makes sense, but you could go to like 25 to threaten me with the trample and keep me from like calculating these. Um, I'm not going to concede until my turn because it doesn't have haste. I can play an 8-drop, and maybe we get an 8-drop that ETBs kill something. Um, 
this is where if I cared or I wanted to, you could go and like scryfall or search it up and figure out what mana value has the greatest percentage of creatures that ETB and kill something. I don't care. Um, was that four mana for like Chupacabra? The odds like on that are so small anyways that it's like, I'll just play an 8-8. Eight, eight. Uh, see what we get because um, my opponent's going ham on this and I don't know if they're just gonna build it until I concede or what because at a certain point they're gonna run out of cards if they don't stop okay 34 is respectable like I don't blame them for that this is one of those irritating things of arena Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, we'll see what we get. Um, cool creatures. I get get plus plus and trample. So let's send everybody in. You can block a thing. You take the action. Um, like the trample is nice. I don't think I can deal enough. You block the seven. I really don't, but maybe... Um... Yeah, sure, that's fine. This might be... Xaxes. Um, based on the math and what they had, so... Um... Like I said, there's completely random. It was not a... Like, I don't think conceding error is wrong if you just don't want to waste the time of it because Arena's kind of annoying in the way that that triggers. And in real life, you could shortcut and just be like, I'm going to do it 34 times and whatever. But uh, we got the win off of that, so that was exciting. Um, like I said, you never know what's going to come off the top, and we could have got a dud. Uh, we hit something that was exactly what we needed to be able to get the win. Um, so let's uh, let's claim a prize here. Let's try a few more for you guys. Um, cool. Oh, Aklazots. Uh, a fun one. Um, yeah, so I really enjoy this though because it's completely random and it puts you in some really interesting game state. Um, sometimes it's boring. Sometimes you have really interesting decisions. And on that, unfortunately, the okay, uh, planes uh, skip the one drops. There's just so many really bad one drops. Um, sometimes it's um, fun, and I will uh, go for a one and, and kind of see what we get. Twos. Ooh, see, that's fun, because that can transform. Um, and, like, give you other things to do with your mana. So, like, on turn six, we can transform this instead of creating a creature. Um, this is fun. Other dwarves. That's cool. Getting treasure is going to be really powerful for my opponent. Again, I want to do... So I'm going to create the creature pre-combat. Ooh. Look at glider. Do I want first strike or flying? I wish it would show me... That maybe there's a way to see the creature. But I don't because... Um, flying is just so much better. Let's see, it's a 2-2. Two, two. So here... Whenever a door becomes tapped, the only way it's going to tap is to attack. Searching doesn't do anything, but getting a treasure every turn to ramp into bigger things is definitely better. Yeah, a first strike would have been probably better, but on the 2-2, two -two, I just... I really don't want to trade that, because I think that's going to be better in the long run. Let's see. So, the 
way it's programmed, if you create water more, that's pretty... These two work together well, so that's fun uh, for my opponent. Unfortunately, I've got uh, better... Like, I've got blocks and things that won't make it as good. The other thing we'll notice is I do not have forest. So we get rid of a second island. I prefer to... Four mana is um, a really good spot. Um, so sometimes I think people will take the strategy of hit three and four and skip one and two because four tends to get some really good things. Turn in a bit of attacks. Untap it. Cast a spell. I don't, this is an ability, so we don't ever cast spells, so we're not going to get that last one. Um, that's fine, though. Um, the question is do we want to attack in the air? And. I think, like we saw in the last game, another thing in when we're big often is that getting in. Nice. Um, the damage is really, really important. Um, Zorin is just a 3 2 now, essentially, because you, they don't get to keep making treasures. Um, that does put them ahead let them essentially make a 6 this turn, which is why they probably went after to do it. 6s can be really, really good. Fortunately, that ETB didn't do anything for them. Um, I think I was saying earlier, I don't know why I like to double the blue first, but I do. Um, so we could do this and pay the life. They have a 4-4, four, four, though. For each counter... On Furnace Blessed Conquer, I don't have any counters and I'm not going to get any, so it's not worth doing that. So, uh, plus 5. Pay. Discard. Swamp. The extra duplicate. Uh, yeah, that's... That's a whiff. Um, I think we attack here. Um, again, if we trade with a 4 4, that's fine. We have to keep the pressure on them. That's. Whether it's right or not, that's my uh, approach to Momer Vegas. Just get in. Like, playing creatures, you're racing Coach Shieldred. Now the question that I have is because you make token copies of these, um, and I'm really, really curious, if you exile Shieldred, do you get the backside? I don't think so. I think it gets exiled permanently. Ah. Menace is going to be a pain. Five toughness is a pain. Nothing better to do. Uh, do I want white? Black? Target creature and opponent controls to his owner's hand. Um, yeah, we're gonna get rid of shield red. That allows us to attack. Four, our five, five, Flying Sphinx also uh, blanks the Hellraiser. Because the other option was we could um, bounce this, but I think that shield rate would have caused us some problems. Uh, got Trample Hexproof. Fun. Uh, so, like, that's a thing we can't Sphinx back away. Okay, our opponent. tired of that one so um but due to the like the ran normally i am not a huge fan of variants and the randomness and i don't like random effects in my decks or whatever one of my probably my chief complaints one of my chief complaints about um arena is kind of the alchemy stuff where they add randomness to it um, and i 
don't like that. However, I really love Momervig, and the reason being is that it's all completely random, and so the randomness is equal on all, like, levels. And so there's... Then the strategy does get to matter. Like, coming in and having some strategy uh, matters. And sometimes you just don't hit things. You whiff or you just don't get there. Um, and sometimes you just get really amazing stuff. Like, And so there's definitely some swings in it. But I think even when those happen, there's still moments to me in every Momervic match um, to make good decisions. And so... Uh, again, I would recommend, I really think if you want to work on uh, or one of the things you want to improve maybe on is getting some uh, decision points or so here's an interesting that 2-2 two -two was kind of meh um, I'm going to take 2 damage and we're going to hold off um, but I think it, it gives you a good opportunity if you are, you know, willing to look into it to take some, uh, get into random situations that you would never realistically be in. Like, why would these two cards be on the battlefield under my opponent's control at one time, ever? Uh, and so, not that they're good, but just that it's, you get into situations that, like, very much you couldn't account for them or plan for them. Um, so my flying 2-2 two -two is does not this and, and then you realize how much like synergies can matter, how much like deck building things matter and like the importance of different abilities. Oh, that's gonna kill me. Um, toxic 2 is going to kill me. I'm gonna trade the not being able to deal with the flyer is uh, going to be a problem. And let's see. We might get punished um, here. Let's get rid of planes again. Um, in not playing that two drop. And only a little bit of like punished in... We could still get really good stuff. It's just we're a little bit behind. Our opponent was on the play, uh, which is one of the things that I will argue is makes it to me worth the risk of our opponent's already going to be ahead of us. Maybe we can keep the board stabilized and get out uh, long term ahead of them. Uh, Alright, so let's see what we get. That's not a bad um, thing because we can. Uh, use it to block and like exile that we can eat that um... Yeah, I don't think that does anything for us. I never actually finished reading it. Uh, you also get the opportunity of like playing with random cards uh, that I would never Otherwise play with um, So here's where we get to go into another decision point because we could as we said block to exile and basically make the trade we know they have no tricks we know they can't do anything. uh the menace does give us a little bit of a problem because they can choose not to so i think that makes our answer because they just kill sharky um and then drag that out we can hit back for the four we're behind in this race but we are going to get another creature next turn Okay, so this is one of those cases where six drop, it's a seven six, but it's vanilla. Um, it's not gonna give you a ton, one, two, three, four, five, six. But our opponent is running a little bit low on um, I don't know that that did anything. So now I'm perfectly happy to. Yeah. Um, double block that guy. Uh, to kill this. Oh my goodness. Dusk Mangler is so good. 
Um, all right. Oh, I could have sacked this and exiled the thing. That was a, that was a misplay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to lose four life. I'm pretty much dead here because I don't have enough to block. I can't mock block menace there. I block that, and I'm dead to all of that. Yeah, whoops. All right, we definitely made a mistake on that one. Um, yeah, we should have sacked the angel. It would die. Let us exile probably the 5-5 five, five menace. And then we have two blockers to eat up things. And we probably can win. Chump the 7-6. Eat something else. Um, and do it. Alright, let's see if we can get one more game in for you guys. Um, on that, I think I'm, I'm doing okay. But always... Um, as you guys know, if you're watching, if there's anything that, even if it doesn't cost us or doesn't work out, if I've made a mistake somewhere and I'm not uh, catching it, um, since this is our last one, I think we are going to just uh, go for uh, turn one. Let's see what, randomly, what we can get. Sometimes you can get something really good, uh, something that will, uh, like a Mana Dork or something, you get a um, Land of War Elves. Uh, a zero four could be good. It blocks the ground. Um, now the question is, do we play a two drop? I don't think we do. Um, no attacks. Oh, it can't attack for one and can't be blocked. That's interesting. I did not pay attention. Um, I'm not familiar with that one. So. Let's factory and get our swamp. Make a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, I can look at the top card of the library. I, I should have hit it for a different one because we can do it. All right. If you have a full party, put a plus one on the creature. Those creatures get death touch. Um, I don't think I have. I have rogue, you need cleric, warrior, wizard. Um, unlikely that we get those, but you never know. So if my opponent goes for their first, uh, that's not bad. Um, the, the question is here, do we spin the wheel? I think... For mine's taking... You're going to hit me for two. No, I don't mind doing that. Get in for four, try and... You can't block this guy. Um... And um, we'll go one, three, five. And then uh, see what our opponent has and what's going on. Can't block. Okay, but a four, four. So it wants to be rather aggressive. Okay, we'll put out forest. We'll hit five. Uh, discarding. Do, 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 do another forest. Generally, that doesn't matter, but. Ooh, this creature must attack if able. So that's a fun one. Um, yeah, all attack. I think. Um. The 4-4 four, four has Trample. I don't really want to trade it with a 0-4. Yeah. Um, I don't mind taking 5 to threaten you with all of this. Because this can't block, which makes Zergo actually pretty good. Uh, as indestructible on my turn, which also makes it pretty good. That's Fun flying powers. So we got a good Zergo um, on that. All right. Uh, oh, right at about 30 minutes. So that was a perfect uh, timing for you guys. Let's see what our uh, last reward is for our cosmetic 
cool. Secret of Sunlight. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're always doing more. Uh, leave any comments. Let me know if you have, you know, thoughts, different ways you approach Momer Vig. Um, if you saw some things we did that you would recommend maybe a, a change on, um, a way to improve, i um, always happy to try and improve uh, with you guys and love your guys' feedback in, in the comments on that. So uh, until next time, thanks, guys. Bye.